Hey everyone, welcome to episode 190, Overwhelm and Confusion. Meet our mom, Kelly Hutchison. She is a life coach. She is a child counselor. She is a teacher. She's a parent coach. And she's a mom to us. She will teach you to stop yelling at your kids. She will teach you to get your kids to lesson. She will teach you how to never sleep with mommy guilt again. She will teach you how to be an imperfect mom. So you can help your kids be imperfect too. And have harmony in the home. Hey everyone, I cannot believe we're nearing 200. And I just texted Lily, I said, hey honey bunny. She's like, what do you want? I'm like, so episode number 200 is coming up. And I was wondering if you would be the guest and you could talk about anything you want. If you're stuck, I can try to help you. And she with the net, come up with a topic. You know what she wrote back? No way. <laughs> so I have to think of a plan B. Maybe Grady will come on again or maybe David will come back on. So anyway, let me know what you want to hear or who you want to hear from on episode 200 or if you just want me to talk about things that are personal in my life because I know a lot of people like to know about my personal life and that's cool, but sometimes people in my four walls or outside my four walls don't want me to talk about my personal life. So I like to do that when we work together one-on-one -on -one or in small groups because then it's not in such a public platform that is out there forever. This episode kind of, not kind of, it actually piggybacks very well onto episode 189. And like I always say, go back and listen. But if you haven't, I'll give you the 411. I'll give you the cliff notes. Episode 189 talked about why we feel stuck. Remember, I'm in earth school with you. This is not my, me talking to you like I'm an authority or celebrity or above you. I am arm in arm, linked hand in hand, heart to heart, doing this work right along with you. Like we are in the thick of it. If you have kids, this is the best time to wake up. This is the best time to become conscious because we're creating a legacy, we're creating patterns, we're creating generations beyond generations of consistency and love and setting the blueprint for love that goes on for generations. So if you are a generationer or dysfunctional disruptor, I'm giving you a virtual high five because that is some hard work but it's so worth it. I mean, what better work to do than to dig down and to dig deep than for our kids? Like there's just nothing more motivating, whether it's getting healthy, whether it's getting emotionally healthy, physically healthy, financially healthy, cleanliness healthy, whatever that word is with our clutter, clutter healthy, environmentally healthy, I'll call it. It's all different for all the people. And that's what makes life so beautiful. Because when you have someone that is helping you in the environmentally healthy part, then you learn it and then you pay it forward. And literally above my desk is the verse from the Bible, to whom much is given, much is required. And that is what I feel like this podcast is for all of you, is it's a gift that we need to share with other people. And it might be in different areas. I need so much help in staying environmentally healthy, so I'm constantly listening, constantly learning, watching YouTubes, listening to podcasts, so it stays fresh in my mind. Sometimes it's emotional health, sometimes it's physical health, but it's never all of them at once. And it's not something we can always focus on all of them all at once. So that's why I always say, pick a lane, go all in on that. And the same things you learn about becoming environmentally healthy will help you when you're becoming physically healthy or spiritually healthy or internally healthy with the food and vitamins and what we're putting into our body, whatever it is, focus on that lane. And you'll be like, whoa, this is the same way I get healthy in the other areas. Now, one of the things that happen when we feel stuck is that the brain will think and think and think and overthink about how to attack any of the areas of what we talk about in ULA. Now, ULA covers all the areas. So when you want to go make the change, whether it's the new year or whether it's a brand new week or you've gotten a diagnosis that all of a sudden you're like, something needs to change. Like a lot of people come to me when the doctor says you are obese and you have diabetes and you need to make a change. And they, that's when they're like the 911 call to me is made. Or they've yelled just one too many times or they're at church and they lose their mind in front of a lot of people and that's their rock bottom. So a lot of people reach out to me when they've reached their rock bottom, whether it's in their marriage or whether it's with their kids or whether it's with their weight. Those are when people usually reach out to me because the pain threshold has been crossed. Remember, it likes to seek pleasure, avoid pain and be efficient. So once the pain 
becomes more than the pleasure, then it's like, I need help. I've reached that spot. And it might not be me, it might be someone else that you reach out to, but you've had that moment where you draw the line in the sand, you're like, no more on X, Y, Z. So when you go to make the change, this is what I want you to expect. So you're not shocked when it happens. If you're trying to go to church more, go to the synagogue more, you're trying to pray more, you're trying to read the Bible more, you're trying to go to the beach more, you're trying to meditate more. When you're doing anything within faith, under that umbrella, your brain will start to spaz, freak out. No thank you. Did I tell you we were on a, at a water park with Lily and a couple other friends and other, the friend's parents? And I was going down, it was, uh, I'm not really like, I used to love water slides and roller coasters. I don't know what's happening. It's like I became like, like an old lady overnight. Like I've been bungee jumping in for Pete's sake twice. And the first time I went, I loved it so much. I got up again and did it and ran up those stairs and did it all over again. And the guy saw my confidence. I think I've told you this. He saw my confidence and so much excitement that as soon as I let go the second time, He's like, all right, three, two, one, bungee. And as soon as I, he said bungee, I let go and he screamed, wait. And he was pranking me because he was like trying to take me down a couple notches. I was in college and that was, I don't know if that's like, I need to like go to a therapist to like process that. But I literally thought something was wrong. And the whole way down, I thought I was going to DIE or paralyze myself or break every bone in my body. Like what is, that is, mm, that just makes me so angry because I've always wanted to go skydiving. Like it's thrown out there in my brain. But like, as soon as I go to do that, my brain's like, no, we're actually not gonna do that. I was like, maybe when I turn 50, cause I just turned 48. I'm like, maybe, no. And my brain's like, are you insane? Are, are you literally insane? So anyway, all that to say, your brain will spaz out like it did when the guy said, wait. Now there was nothing to fear, but he put the fear of God into me because he immediately changed my thoughts from being, ex my emotions were excited because my thought was that was awesome. I want to do it again. I was a bit of an adrenaline junkie when I was in college, which I don't know where that comes from because I have none of that now. Like, where'd that go? Like, what happened? Am I, am I like, has, has all the adrenaline left my body? Now I'm just like the safe old grandma who drives slow. And I was like, you're the worst driver ever. I'm like, oh, that's funny because when you said you wanted to learn how to drive, you chose me to be your teacher. She's like, well, daddy over explains things and he just goes so slow when he's talking. I'm like, but you always complain about my driving. I'm the worst driver ever. I drive too slow and I don't have road rage. That's her complaint. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Would you rather me have road rage and be a crazy driver and drive fast? She's like, actually, yeah, then we won't be late places. I'm like, we're never late. Are you kidding me? We live like 45 minute buffer time. Anyway, I digress. So when you're working with making a change with whether it's stop yelling, it's going to church more, it's starting a new workout program, it's training for a 5K, trying to be more outgoing, saying yes to more out social, social outings, going on a financial diet where you're like gonna curb your spending. My friend Crystal told me she's going to stop buying anything new for the next year. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Now consumables, no but she's trying to be climate conscious. And I was like, that is amazing. And whenever you go to do something like that, your brain is going to stop you. If you're trying to change jobs or you wanna start your own business or you wanna become a coach or Etsy shop or start your own photography business. Those are all examples I come up with, but you know what that thing is. Start a podcast. Ooh, that brings up a lot of emotions for people. Write a book start a blog, go on a mission trip, something to do with your field. That's the F and in, in the ULA is field means your job, your J-O-B, and then fun. When you start, a, even when you go start a new hobby, even when you go to learn an instrument, like I'm even doing Duolingo, which is an app for free. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is so dumb. I'm never going to learn this. I'm 48 years old. These are all my thoughts. I'm 48 years old. Why am I doing this? Oh, I'm doing it to bond with my kids. That's fine, but I'm not gonna learn anything. And here I am like, I have a 17 day streak. I'm like, who is this? And I'm like getting a lot right on the post quizzes. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm like doing something. So I'm going against the grain every single day. And like I tell you, we're on episode almost 200 and my brain stops me every single time I go to record a podcast, every single time. So don't expect the voices to go away. Just know that as soon as you go to make change in whatever area that you want it most in life and you know what to do, but you're not doing it, your brain will default to overwhelm and confusion.
<gasps> it is so annoying, but it happens all the time. I talk about all the time when I'm starting this podcast, when I was starting this podcast, for two years, my brain spun out in overwhelming confusion. I just need the right mic. I just need the right software. I just need a website. Once I, once the kids are older, once I have more to share, once I have more interest in a podcast, that's what will motivate me. Something outside of me. Do you see how everything out was outside of me? I spent probably six months researching microphones, microphones, and they're a dime a dozen. There, if you go on Amazon podcast microphone, go Google it. You will find 75 right there on the spot. Well, I have to find the right one. I find the perfect one. Then I get a recommendation from someone who has already have a podcast. And then I would have to research that and research that and then read all the reviews. I'm like, well, that's not the right one. And so your brain will spin out in overwhelming confusion. If you're trying to find a new church or synagogue or a new place to be closer to God, your brain will spin out. If it's not something you're already doing. If you're trying to stop yelling at your kids, your brain will spin out. Well, if I just had different kids, then I wouldn't be yelling like this. If I had fewer kids or more kids or more support or different parents, then I wouldn't have to yell. See how everything is outside of us? So it's like, well, let me listen to Kelly's podcast one more time. Let me just stay in this feeling of overwhelm and not change because my brain is too overwhelmed with all the other things going on in life. So I can't change. So that's when it's us working against ourselves because we spin out in overwhelming confusion. And we start thinking about our thinking and then we become an overthinker. And I'm right there with you. I do it all the time. Even training for a 5K or a half marathon or a marathon, I'm like, I gotta find the tr perfect training program. I gotta figure out how many more weeks, which is the right race to do. I don't think this is the right race. It's gonna be too hot. Look at that season. I love that race, but that race is an hour away. How can I do that race? We go to church. Am I gonna be home in time for church? I can't be home in time for church if the race is on a Sunday at 7 a.m. Like this is what goes on in an average brain. And that's my brain. And my brain is not average. My brain is spastic. It's weird. It thinks weird thoughts. It bounces all over the place like a dog chasing a squirrel. It thinks a lot of negative things. It thinks a lot of thoughts based out of not feeling good enough and a lot of thoughts out of lack. And it loves to spin and read reviews and spin over and over and over on overwhelming confusion. What happens is when you spin out on overwhelming confusion, which the brain will do, just allow it to do it. Kind of kind of giggle at it like, "Oh, I, I see what you're doing, brain. This is so this is so clever of you. I understand this." Then you have compassion and grace and you can see it for what it is versus belonging to you and having ownership over it. And when you when we spin out in overwhelming confusion, it's like going on those chair swings at the fair. You've seen those chair swings where you sit on the chair. Like when you think about amusement rides, you're like, what is going on? The reason why we go on amusement park rides, which I used to, is because we want to feel a certain way. So we want to feel that feeling of euphoria, like we're flying on the swings, or that feeling of adrenaline where that drops for the roller coaster. And as you get older, you're like, yeah, I'm good. But when we're younger, oh my goodness, I was like an adrenaline junkie. I was like a euphoria junkie. And I went on a, I also, as I got older, I think it's post kids. I am so like, I get motion sickness all the time. Like I used to go on trapezes and we, we used to go to Club Med with Allison's family. She was allowed to bring one friend and she brought me. We went to St. Lucia and Eleuthera and we went on the trapeze. We were on the trapeze shows. Like I was doing flips on that thing, obviously with a harness and a trainer and another person who knew what they were doing. I was not like a professional, but like I was in the show. I was in like this white leotard. I have pictures. I have s chalk on my hands. Like what? And now if I go on a like a merry-go-round, I'm like, oh God, I got to put my head between my knees. I'm getting queasy. I feel lightheaded. Even talking about it right now is giving me some feels. Why do I say that? It's because that's what it's like when our brain just gets exhausted from the overwhelming confusion. It just gets queasy it gets motion sickness from thinking about it so much until it's like okay i cannot be in financial ruins anymore i have to do something different i cannot live in a passionless job anymore i have to make a change or add to it where i can do something on the side or add a hobby i have to add some more excitement and fun into my life or i have to have more friends or i have to say yes more or to find different friends because these friends all they do is gossip about me but when i leave the table or I have to start being more consistent with my workouts. Whatever it is, your brain will go and try to find the perfect friend, the perfect workout, the perfect church, the perfect financial plan, the perfect amount of fun, the perfect job. And it likes to interview other people and say, what's that like? 
and read the reviews and spin and spin and spin and spin. But you know what happens is that the thinking about it is more exhausting than the actual act of doing whatever it is that's holding you think is holding you back. So when I was, <laughs> Alice and I used to go on these things all the time. We were like, she loved it just as much as I did. And I remember going on the swings and I just had some, this is, this is um, not the prettiest story, but I'll say it in a very clean way. So, because I'm very, um, also very queasy. Like if someone tells me like, oh, I fell down and I broke my arm, I'm like, stop, 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 stop. I, like I will start to get lightheaded if they go too much into the injury. And you'll notice if someone starts talking about an injury that they had when they were a kid, then the other person says, oh yeah, I had an injury like that, but this is what happened. And then it's like, not people are topping each other, but the topic and it just goes and goes. It's like a, it's like a vortex you can't get out of. It's like the twisty bowl. It's like the toilet and you just see the water swirling. You're like, I know where this is going. I'm out, I'm out, abort, abort. Or they try to send you pictures of like a boil on their arm and they're like, what is this? Does anyone know what this is? And everyone's like, oh, I think it might be from a, a rash or it might be from your clothes or it might be, and everyone's like weighing in. And I'm like, whoa, I can't look at that. Are you kidding me? I am so queasy and so sensitive and so not the person to share one of those pictures. And other people are like, I don't care. I love seeing it the better. So it's all based on different people and different vibes. So what I'm telling you is that we went on these swings that you get in the swings, you get chained in and it's just like, wee, and it's kind of like a merry-go-round with a little more force and there's a lot of more circular going on and I get so dizzy. So like the teacups are like a bane of my existence. And so I'm on the swings. I just had peanut M&Ms before I got on and let's just say the people underneath me on the swings, I'm like, Allison, I don't feel that well. And like, you know, the person, if you catch up to the person in front of you, you hold on if you know them and then you kind of give them a little boost. So they kind of like go out in the circle more. So that's happening to me. And I'm like, Allie, I don't feel good, dude. Like something's wrong. She's like, well, we can't get off now. And I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, I'm getting the boost. And I'm getting the boost. And I'm like, oh dear, this is not good. And all of a sudden the people below me got a little rainbow of um, activity on top of them and i'm telling you that was so humiliating so embarrassing and i ran out of that fair so fast my head was spinning i say all that because that's what happens when we spin on overwhelming confusion we're spinning out on the twisty twirl and on the teacup ride and on the swings and that's more exhausting than actually taking the action i will say spinning out in overwhelming confusion for two years on the podcast was harder than doing the podcast for the last couple of years they're both hard we just get to choose the harder. So whatever you're going after, just know that your brain will spin out in overwhelming confusion and then let it do it and then be like, oh my goodness, Kelly was right. Not Kelly was right. That's how the brain works is right. So then when you see it in a certain area, even if you just try to change the way you dress, you're like, I just need a fashion update. I'm not gonna keep wearing what I'm wearing. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. And then you change it up and watch your brain going, what do you think you are? Even if it's your makeup, your hair, Something little, take something little. Emptying the dishwasher, cleaning out a drawer, watch your brain spin in overwhelming confusion and then watch it take inaction because inaction is actually an action. And then we spin out and we're exhausted and we're like on that swing ride and we feel nauseous, probably not physically nauseous, but it's an emotional nausea that we can create in our own, on our, sorry, we can create on our own based on our thoughts. And from that place, you can allow the overwhelming confusion to be there and just know that it's coming from your thoughts. Allow the thoughts to be there. Give yourself grace and compassion and lots of fascination and then change the thoughts if you want to. You don't have to do anything to change it. You can allow it to be there and just keep feeling that feeling and knowing it's coming from your thoughts. And then with gentleness and kindness, you can change that thought to reduce the overwhelming confusion, but the overwhelming confusion will still be there. It just reduces it. Cause I still feel very overwhelming confused, even with this podcast over episode 200. Like, am I saying the right things? Do I have the right mic? Am I promoting it enough? Am I talking about it enough? Or am I just posting about it in my closet? And then whoever's listening to it is the people who listen to it. It's always very scary. But when we face our fears, then the overwhelming confusion gets a little softer. It doesn't disappear. It's always there, but it goes to the back seat versus being in the front seat and driving the ship. So just think about your thinking, watch how overwhelming confusion will come up when you go to make that change and then allow it to be there. Give yourself grace and compassion and then change it if you want to, because we're grown adults in emotional adulthood and then make the decision and then have your own back. 
I love you guys and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting boot camp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.